Scientific dating of these artifacts, again, corresponds to the non-Aryan invasion model of Indian antiquity. Furthermore, the Matsya and Vayu Puranas describe great flooding which destroyed the capital city of Hastinapur, forcing its inhabitants to relocate in Koshambi. The soil of Hastinapur reveals proof of this flooding. Archaeological evidence of the new capital of Koshambi has recently been found, which has been dated to the time period just after this flood. Similarly, in Kurukshetra, the scene of the great Mahabharat war, iron arrows and spearheads have been excavated and dated by thermal luminescence to 2800 BCE, the approximate date of the war given within the Mahabharat itself. The Mahabharat also describes three cities given to the Pandavas, the heroes of the Mahabharat, after their exile. Paniprastha, Sonaprastha, and Indraprastha, which is Delhi's Puranakela. These sites have been identified and yielded pottery and antiquities which show a cultural consistency and dating consistent for the Mahabharat period. Again, verifying statements recorded in the Vedic literatures. Although early Indologists in their missionary zeal widely vilified the Vedas as primitive mythology, many of the world's greatest thinkers admired the Vedas as great repositories of advanced knowledge and high thinking. Arthur Schopenhauer, the famed German philosopher and writer, wrote that I encounter in the Vedas deep, original, lofty thoughts suffused with a high and holy seriousness. The well-known early American writer Ralph Waldo Emerson read the Vedas daily. Emerson wrote, I owed a magnificent day to the Bhagavad Gita. Henry David Thoreau said, In the morning I bathe my intellect in the stupendous philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita in comparison with which our modern world and its literature seems puny and trivial. So great were Emerson and Thoreau's appreciation of Vedantic literatures that they became known as the American Transcendentalists. Their writings contain many thoughts from Vedic philosophy. Other famous personalities who spoke of the greatness of the Vedas were Alfred North Whitehead, British mathematician, logician, and philosopher who stated that Vedanta is the most impressive metaphysics the human mind has conceived. Julius Robert Oppenheimer, the principal developer of the atomic bomb, stated that the Vedas are the greatest privilege of this century. During the explosion of the first atomic bomb, Oppenheimer quoted several Bhagavad Gita verses from the 11th chapter, such as Death I am, cause of destruction of the worlds. When Oppenheimer was asked if this is the first nuclear explosion, he significantly replied, yes, in modern times implying that ancient nuclear explosions may have previously occurred. Lin Yutang, Chinese scholar and author, wrote, India was China's teacher in trigonometry, quadratic equations, grammar, phonetics, and so forth. Francis Voltaire stated, everything has come down to us from the banks of the Ganges. From these statements we see that many renowned intellectuals believed that the origin of scientific thought was the Vedas. The Vedic literatures contain descriptions of advanced scientific techniques, sometimes even more sophisticated than those used in our modern technological world. Modern metallurgists have not been able to produce iron of comparable quality to the 22-foot-high Iron Pillar of Delhi, which is the largest 
hand forged block of iron from antiquity. This pillar stands as mute testimony to the highly advanced scientific knowledge of metallurgy that was known in ancient India. Cast in approximately the 3rd century BCE, the 6.5 ton pillar over two millennia has resisted all rust and even a direct hit by the artillery of the invading army of Nadir Shah during his sacking of Delhi in 1737. Vedic cosmology is yet another ancient Vedic science which can be confirmed by modern scientific findings. And this is acknowledged by well-known scientists and authors such as Carl Sagan and Count Morris Maeterlinck, who recognize that the cosmology of the Vedas closely parallels modern scientific findings. Carl Sagan stated, Vedic cosmology is the only one in which the time scales correspond to those of modern scientific cosmology. Nobel laureate Count Morris Maeterlinck wrote of a cosmogony which no European conception has ever surpassed. French astronomer Jean-Claude Bailey corroborated the antiquity and accuracy of the Vedic astronomical measurements as more ancient than those of the Greeks or Egyptians, and that the movements of the stars calculated 4,500 years ago does not differ by a minute from the tables of today. The 90-foot tall astronomical instrument known as Samrat Yantra, built by the learned king Suai Jai Singh of Jaipur, measures time to within two seconds per day. Cosmology and other scientific accomplishments of ancient India spread to other countries along with mercantile and cultural exchanges. There are almost 100 references in the Rig Veda alone to the ocean and maritime activity. This is confirmed by Indian historian R. C. Majumdar, who stated that the people of the Indus Saraswat civilization engaged in trade with Suma and centers of culture in Western Asia and Crete. An example of these exchanges is found in the inscriptions on the Heliodorus Column, erected in 113 BCE by Heliodorus, a Greek ambassador to India and convert to Vaishnavism, as well as the second century BCE coins of Agastocles, showing images of Krishna and Balaram. These artifacts stand testimony that Sanatan Dharma predates Christianity. This also confirms the link between India and other ancient civilizations such as Greece and shows that there was a continuous exchange of culture, philosophy, and scientific knowledge between India and other countries. Indeed, the Greeks learned many wonderful things from India. Voltaire, the famous French writer and philosopher, stated, Pythagoras went to the Ganges to learn geometry. Abraham Seidenberg, author of the authoritative History of Mathematics, credits the Subha Sutras as inspiring all mathematics of the ancient world, from Babylonia to Egypt to Greece. As Voltaire and Seidenberg have stated, many highly significant mathematical concepts have come from the Vedic culture, such as the theorem bearing the name of the Greek mathematician Pythagoras is found in the Shatapata Brahmana as well as the Subha Sutra, the Indian mathematical treatise written centuries before Pythagoras was born. The decimal system based on powers of 10, where the remainder is carried over to the next column, first mentioned in the Taittiriya Samhita of the Black Yajurveda. The introduction of zero as both a numerical value and a place marker. The concept of infinity. 
The binary number system, essential for computers, was used in Vedic verse meters. A hashing technique similar to that used by modern search algorithms such as Google's was used in South Indian musicology. From the name of a raga, one can determine the notes of the raga from this Kattapayadi system. The Vedas, however, are not as well known for presenting historical and scientific knowledge as they are for expounding subtle sciences such as the power of mantras. We all recognize the power of sound itself by its effects, which can be quite dramatic. Here, a high-pitched frequency shatters a drinking glass. So, we can easily understand that loud sounds can produce substantial reactions. It is commonly believed that mantras can carry hidden power which can in turn produce profound effects. The ancient Vedic literatures are full of descriptions of weapons being called by mantra. For example, many weapons were invoked by mantra during the epic Kurukshetra war, wherein the Bhagavad Gita itself was spoken. The ancient deployment of Brahmastra weapons, equivalent to modern-day nuclear weapons, are described throughout the Vedic literatures. Additionally, mantras carry hidden spiritual power which can produce significant benefits when chanted properly. Indeed, the Vedas themselves are sound vibrations in literary form and carry a profound message. Spiritual disciplines recommend meditational practices such as silent meditation silent recitation of mantras, and also the verbal repetition of specific mantras out loud. A clinical test of the benefits of mantra chanting was performed on three groups of 62 subjects, males and females of average age 25. They chanted the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra 25 minutes each day under strict clinical supervision. Results showed that regular chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra reduces stress and depression and helps reduce bad habits and addictions. These results formed a PhD thesis at Florida State University. Spiritual practitioners claim many benefits from mantra meditation such as increased realization of spiritual wisdom, inner peace, and a strong communion with God and the spiritual realm. These effects may be experienced by following the designated spiritual path. Most of the evidence given in this presentation is for the apara vidya, or material knowledge of the Vedic literatures. The Vedas, however, are more renowned for their paravidya, or spiritual knowledge. And even superior is the realized knowledge of the Vedic rishis or saints, that which is beyond the objective knowledge of modern science, knowledge of the eternal realm of Sat, Chit, Ananda, eternality, blissfulness, and full knowledge. But that is another presentation. For further information, please visit our website, www.gosai.com. Thank you.